And joining us this time, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL here in the Washington area. Also, Mark Levine is a nationally syndicated radio talk show host. He's also the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Gentlemen, Republican front runner Donald Trump stirring the pot once again with yet another controversial phrase. So you have a silent majority in this country that feels abused, that feels forgotten, that feels mistreated. And it's a term that hasn't been brought up in years, as you know. You, people haven't heard that term in many years. Now, the term silent majority was originally used by former President Nixon as an appeal to white voters during the civil rights movement. Now, Trump making it his own. Jack, your party has had a difficult time recruiting minorities, and at the risk of being a nattering nabob of negativity, does that kind of <laughs> rhetoric worry you? Well, I don't think Trump intended it, David, in a racial context. I think the issue is he's referring to 68, and the analogy to 68 might be right on. The country was tired of the Great Society in 1968. They were tired of years and years of liberalism and giveaways. Nixon came in. He vowed to shut that down. He vowed to stop lawlessness. We're seeing lawlessness on the southwest border. So I think Trump is very right to use that term. I don't think he used it in a racial context. And I think uh, 2016 might end up being very much like 1968. It's just one of those things, though, that any, it's inextricably linked to Richard Nixon. And when he was talking about the silent majority, there was very little doubt to whom he was specifically addressing those remarks. I mean, this is something that he said hasn't been heard in a very long time. So he was specifically referencing Richard Nixon when he said it. And listen, the Tea Party uh, is hardly silent. <laughs> They've been very active. The right wing is hardly silent. So whether he was appealing to racial appeals, who knows? You'll have to ask Donald Trump. But he's pretty good at dog whistles. And uh, I think he knows which dog whistles he uses. I, we should differentiate here because I don't think that's necessarily fair. The right wing of the Republican Party and the Tea Party are not necessarily the same thing. And I think right. you have the, That's why the I don't Tea think he's Party referring to them. The Tea Party has been conspicuously silent on Donald Trump so far. It's going to be hard, Dave. If they try to brand Trump a racist, I think that's a very hard sell. I don't think the majority of swing voters will see him that way. I don't think, I certainly don't think uh, Republican voters, we're already seeing him up over 25, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. When you're over 30 percent in Republican primary polls, that indicates that you're appealing to a broad mass of Republican voters. But I think even in a general election, assuming he's the nominee, if Democrats want to try to brand him some kind of racist, I don't think that works. I think Trump has a history that speaks otherwise. I am really starting to think the primary, Dave, could be on the Democratic side. I'm not sure Republicans have much of a primary left at this point. Uh, Mark, what about that? Because if you take, for instance, the two leading uh, candidates in the, the uh, GOP side of things right now, between Donald Trump and uh, uh, ben, Carson. ben Carson, you have the outsiders. Right polling more than the, the following six candidates. Right. Uh, the, I think the, what that GOP shows, side. what is that? It shows that even the Republicans are upset with the Republicans and the way they've acted in Congress. They mm -hmm. don't like Mitch McConnell. They don't like John Boehner. Yeah. They don't like basically them trying to shut the government down every chance they can. It shows that even the Republicans are really angry with their leadership. So they appeal to a That's bunch of clowns true, like, like uh, right. Donald Trump. You're right. But there's a big caveat here. You're 100 percent right. But Trump is bringing all those angry Republicans together. And he's the first person to be able to do that since Ronald Reagan well, in the well, 1980s. Go, Donald, go, then, because I can't think of an easier person for Hillary Clinton to beat. Oh, so my. I wish, they I said wish that Donald about Reagan. Well. I wish Donald well. And Jack makes a good point there, because they said the same thing about Ronald Reagan. Ronald I, Reagan was a governor of California. Ronald Reagan had a long political history but before I, he ran for president. The whole thing this time is the outsider aspect of things. People have right. had it up to here right, you are. with Washington on both sides of of the political divide. No, I don't think, not on the Democratic side. On, I think uh, Americans are angry at the uh, Republican so, Congress. So, so then how, what do you, what's the, the deal with Bernie Sanders then all of a sudden? Oh, I think Bernie Sanders is new, but he's hardly an outsider. He's new in the sense of a national figure, but uh, Bernie Sanders has been a senator for You don't for, think he's uh, trying to shake Mark, up the Democratic I can tell you, Democrats, you know this very well. No, I, I think what he's doing is he's showing that there's a lot of support for looking out for working class people in the Democratic Party, and I think his rallies show that. But it's actually, very Clear to me. The difference Bernie between Sanders him and, aside, and Hillary Clinton isn't that great. Both of them care very much about middle class and working class voters. It, Bernie Sanders has a stronger rhetoric because he's a socialist. Okay, it's Jack, becoming very clear 
here that Democratic, even the New York Times is reporting that Democratic leaders all over the country are fundamentally unhappy with Hillary Clinton. They don't like the way she handles email. They don't like anything about here. They're candidate shopping. They're almost to the point where they're ready to look at people like a Howard Schultz. Jack, the you Starbucks describe CEO. your party, I'll describe mine, okay? I know your party likes Donald Trump. Good for them. My party likes Hillary Clinton very much, and she's going to be our nominee. Well, we'll see on both of those things, I think. Gentlemen, to make matters worse, uh, conservative commentator Ann Coulter had this to say when she gave an opening speech at a Trump rally earlier this week. I love the idea of the Great Wall of Trump. I want to have a two drink minimum, <laughs> make it a big worldwide tourist attraction and everyday live drone shows whenever anyone tries to cross the border. Uh, Jack, Ann Coulter has been a bomb thrower from, a, from way back. Uh, that doesn't represent your party, does it? No, I'm not sure. I think I kind of agree with it, Dave. I'll be honest with you. The, the American public at large is ready to have the problem at the southwest border fixed. I think there's just there's a broad feeling, and it, it goes way beyond Republicans, that you have a lot of people basically just invading the country. And this business with Obama paying for children coming over the border, the great mass of Americans, middle class Americans, Americans are tired of this. Trump has tapped into anger uh, mm -hmm. over immigration issues. He's made the issue his own. You even see Jeb Bush struggling to get back into the issue. Yeah, Jeb Bush can't do it. Rubio can't do it. They all want to get back in. They can't. Trump has captured the issue. And the I next stop is to have the Coliseum where we throw Mexican Americans to the Lions, I suppose. Ann Coulter is a bomb thrower. She's a performance artist. She makes her living off of saying ludicrous and offensive things. And I think it's fitting that she's supporting a man who also makes his living out of saying ludicrous and offensive things. They belong together. The difference being, though, uh, there seems to be suddenly some traction with Donald Trump. Ann Coulter has always been sort of the, uh, the freak show, and, <laughs> and I use that term advisedly uh, in the Republican Party. She says those things to get notoriety, and it works for a while, but then she goes away. And again. that's exactly what's going to happen to Donald Trump. The are you saying these the things to get notoriety? That because there are a lot of Republicans right now that thought exactly that same thing about two months ago, and they're right now. They've got his tire tracks all over. The election is 14 months away. Around this time, four years ago, I believe Michelle Bachman was leaving it, or uh, maybe uh, 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 someone like uh, uh, oh, Herman Cain. I Mark, mean, come she on, was, no but one you have to understand something. This you seriously, if Donald Donald Trump is the nominee. No one will be more pleased than myself. You have to understand but I don't think Mark, be the nominee. I can tell you, just looking at the news cycle between now and the first of the year, I don't see any other Republican. And I'm not here to endorse Trump. I'm not endorsing anyone. Mm -hmm. Although I'm warming up to Trump. I don't see any other Republican even coming close to getting into this, unless there is some tectonic, massive event to bring one of the others out of the pack. I think almost all of the others are completely forgotten. Trump has captured the news cycle. The media can't sell Jack, anybody I think you and the Trump Donald on the Republican side. I think uh, the two of you say things uh, that, that uh, you should like Donald Trump. I, I, it's one of those things, uh, Mark, I think the Democratic Party ignores Donald Trump at its own peril right now. That may be brave talk right now, but uh, in, in another six months, it might be a different story altogether. Let's switch gears a little bit now, if we can. Carly Fiorina, the Republican presidential candidate, said the RNC, the Republican National Committee, is rigging the game by not letting her on the main stage uh, during the next debate, the CNN debate. Jack, the GOP is constantly having to defend itself against the war on women, the stereotype Type. Shouldn't Fiorina have a spot at the uh, the the uh, adults table here? Well, she should have it if she earns it. She has to. We have a very objective standard. I think the standard Fox used is good. I think what CNN's doing is good. You have to earn it. You have to have a certain percentage. Fiorina's doing a good job. If I were her advisor, I'd advise her to do the same thing, Dave. She's trying to capture. She's the only mm -hmm. woman in the race. Yeah. She's got to use that card. She's got to use it at every turn. Uh, she's doing a good job of that. Uh, does she have a chance? Uh, no, but she's doing a good job keeping her name in the news. Remember, even people like Chris Christie, Scott Walker, uh, uh, even Jeb Bush, they're simply falling out of the news cycle yeah. at this point. Those campaigns aren't even being covered. Mark, I, let me ask you, yeah. if I can, before you respond there, because I put yourself in Carly Fiorina's camp right now. If, if you're running the campaign, you're doing... She 
had a, a very good performance in the first debate. It kind of got people to have a second look at her. How do you get people to take a third look? How do you get her into that, that debate? Well, I think you make the argument that the polls since the first debate have shown her way up, and you ask CNN to only use those polls. That's mm -hmm. a fair thing to do. I don't think it's right to say that she should be there because she's the only woman running for the Republican nomination. Yep. Listen, if she had half the support Hillary Clinton did on the Democratic side, she'd be leading the Republican field. Her support simply isn't that high. So you got to go with the post-poll debates, not the fact that she's a woman. Enough with the Republicans already. Let's talk about some Democrats, can we? Vice President Joe Biden, after that impromptu meeting with Senator Elizabeth Warren and the hire of a brand new communications director with campaign experience, by the way, the uh, talk of a Biden campaign reached fever pitch on Wednesday. The Veep himself told top Democrats at the Democratic National Committee meeting he was assessing whether or not he had the emotional fuel for a White House bid. If I were to announce to run, I have to be able to commit to all of you that I would uh, be able to give it my whole heart and my whole soul. And right now, both are pretty well banged up and we're trying to figure out uh, that issue. Mark, should the Veep make a go of it? Well, I think he's right. Uh, he has every reason to have the emotional state banged up. He just lost Bo Biden in a horrific tragedy. Uh, I, truly a, a wonderful person. Sure. And uh, I, I don't think he has it. I think actually he's trying to let those many of us who really love Joe Biden uh, let us down easy by having us recognize that he really he, he's got to spend time mourning right now. And I think that's what he's going to choose. Mark, to do. you're really reaching the point. If you look at the numbers, tr Hillary Clinton's been in national politics for 30 years. In terms of politics. Trump is a relative newcomer. Trump is within six points or eight points of Hillary Clinton. That's terrible news for the Democratic Party. Here's what's worse. It means worse. nothing for two Here, months. Here's out. what's worse for Hillary. If you want to keep it, sounds like you're endorsing Hillary. If you want to keep her, no, here's, I like Joe Biden. here's the problem. She can't surface without getting negative coverage. She cannot enter the news media in any capacity at any time. She came out with her big student loan program in August. Uh, Which was actually get pretty amazing. Debt-free college. That's she something can't that's surface American without negative across. attention. Uh, that's something that Democrats and Republicans support. I, I think we need to talk more about policy. I think Donald Trump tends to, yeah, soak the energy out of the room. But you but can't if she's the nominee. That's the of problem. Course you can. can't. Listen, she didn't do anything wrong. There was no policy about emails. This is entirely a mountain over a molehill. And, and I really don't think Even anyone cares about Even if that's true. You, you think that. I don't think that. But let's assume that's true. Even if that's true, my point is the negative coverage won't go away. She can't escape the Look, issue. Hillary that Clinton has had negative coverage ever since White in 1993, the Republicans have been trying to take her down. That's not unusual. They always try to take down our nominees. If Joe Biden is the one that's there, they'll try to take him down, too. That's just what they do. That's politics. And, Mark, well, that's going to have to be our last word. We could do this for the next 24 hours right now, <laughs> and it would be fun. I expect we'll be doing it again. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. Thanks to you both. Dave, thank, thank you, you, Mark. Dave. Thank you, guys.